to PGL Tyrant Tales Spring Season. My name is Nimsh. I'm here with Raven, as usual, and with uh, Dessen. Welcome back to the casting couch. Thanks a lot. It's amazing to be here. And uh, we haven't casted before, but you've been on this couch two times before. So are you becoming a caster now? <laughs> Probably. I really enjoy to be here and casting with you. you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've casted sure. you both times. Yeah. Really good. It's a lot of fun. Uh, looking forward to cast with you again. All right, it will great. be amazing. And uh, Raven, what are, what are we up to? Yeah, so um, we've got the second semi-final uh, now. So the winner of this will go into the uh, the finals and you know the play for the for the big bucks and the, and all the HCT points and the championship in general. So a uh, really important match now, and I, th I think we have two quite aggressive players on our hands, which will be Absolutely. which will be interesting. We might see the uh, some quick matches, but I'm just happy to actually cast a hunter game potentially oh, because you've missed uh, the previous hunter game. Yeah, I was devastated. Like we had no hunters um, on Friday. I don't think we had any on Saturday, as far as I'm aware. Or at least there wasn't any on stream. And then typically uh, on my break, the hunter game starts. I'm like, no, but I got to watch it. Just now, are you excited for the hunter, or is there anything else in the matchup that you want to really see? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the hunter, and we know there's a Kassan and a, a Flair, yeah. and he's playing like three or four probably different traps. So I'm looking really forward to see the hunter. It's also both shaman players actually playing against each other. So who is the faster one, right? Yeah, fastest <laughs> Doom Hammer Turn Five wins game. <laughs> and uh, there is a, a, lot of, a lot at stake because those guys are guaranteed uh, $2,500 already for themselves and five HCT points. But if they win, they will guarantee 4000 for the final for the second place and at least 10 points for the second place as well. And obviously, have it ha will they will have a chance to fight for the grand prize of 8015 points. That's a lot of money and points, right? For sure. It's really a big prize and I believe they both will do anything to win this. So like Play Hunter. <laughs> I love <it. laughs> For example. Love yeah. <laughs> play Hunter and Shaman. Yeah. Now, I mean, to be honest, we've seen how powerful uh, Shaman has been, at least for the matches on stream. Like, the deck's good. <laughs> it's yeah. like been performing really well. And, uh, you know, I think we saw a th uh, 3-0 or two three O's yesterday with Shaman as well. So Actually, um, Tracky Style has a, a really good record coming into this um, top four because he won his top 16 match 3-0. And then he won 3-0 again. He, he, the first one he won with the Shaman deck, but the second one with the Hunter. So right now, in, the t in this top 16, he's undefeated. Yeah, for sure. And I believe Destiny Druid is doing really good. Like, he was the only one I lost to in the sprint. And that was actually, I won the first round, and then he 3 0 with the Face Shaman. So yep. I believe he knows how to play it. And he's playing a special version with Flame Tongue. And so let's see what he brings. Absolutely. And what I also like uh, is that they are bringing some, some national pride to the table because both Tracky Style and uh, Gianna Druid are being supported by the, their countries. So I know a lot of uh, Romanian fans are rooting for, for Tracky Style and then a lot of Polish uh, people are actually watching as well and rooting for Gianna Druid. And uh, they fight not only for themselves, but uh, for their own countries at the very moment, especially Tracky Style where uh, he is on, the, on his home ground. Yeah, it's got to feel good to like win at quite a major tournament, uh, you know, in, in your own area. It's definitely nice and uh, j just good. I mean, just good for all these players now. Everyone who's left in the tournament is, is definitely fighting for that big break. And uh, already, I think, even top four is a good position to be in. So uh, these guys can gain a lot from potentially winning this tournament. Exactly. And we hyped it up enough. We actually have Diana waiting with the players. So let's ask them some questions directly. Diana, take it away. Thank you so much, guys. I am here with our two semifinalists. It's Tracky Style and Gianni Druid. Now, first, Tracky Style, you are only 19 years old, but you have taken this tournament by storm. And a big part of it is your deck are your deck choices. Tell me, how did you come up with the strategy to counter secrets? Yeah, I'm going to deck with my partner and my team. I'm going to deck with my partner and my și de ce nu împotriva secret paladinului? Uh. So I uh, built my decks with my teammates. I think that I chose the best decks to counter. Can you say it again, please? Petron Warrior, Zoo, secret paladin. Um, I chose the best uh, decks to counter Patron and Zoo. Uh, also, you are playing Hunter. How, how did you decide to bring Hunter? That's not a deck that we see very often in tournaments. Am ales Hunter-ul deoarece am văzut ce joacă adversarul meu în trecut. Am jucat frisme ce am hotărât să bagă în pachet Kezan și Flair. So he said that uh, he liked he chose Hunter because uh, it was based on what Arnish was playing and he thought it was a good uh, counter for his freeze mage. Okay. Jenny Druid, um, first of all, uh, when... Uh, 
Extraki Style was uh, at the interview after his match against Arnie. She said that he expected that this was going to be a pretty balanced game. Now tell me, how exactly did you prepare your decks for this tournament? And how do you think they will compare to his, given that they're pretty unpredictable? I tried like four mo decks with I'm most comfortable with and just took three which had the best win rate in like uh, a lot of games against my teammates. And one final question. Um, what is the origin of your name? Because um, Lofar told me that uh, Jani actually means wealthy in uh, Polish. It's just a random name when, uh, because I didn't expect I will play Hearthstone a lot. So. So it's nothing special, it's just a random nickname. So Druid is just random. Could it have been Johnny Warlock or Johnny Hunter? Yes. <laughs> okay, well, let's hope that luck is on your side, but also on Extraki uh, style side. And now I'm ready to hand it over to the casters. Thank you so much, Diana. And uh, oh man, I'm just so. Uh, it was so funny because you know, as as Janet Druid, like you, you are this guy that just wants to play the game. You create your your battle and nickname, and then suddenly your career explodes, and you're here playing for for really serious money. So this is a word of caution to everybody starting playing Hearthstone or, or other games. Think about your nicknames, guys. You might be there some, at at some point at the, at the top of the big tournament, and be like. Yep, maybe that's not the best brand. But yeah, and, and the problem is as well, like once you once you've made that sort of good performance and your name's out there, it's actually more detrimental to try and change it. So you really do have to just stick with it and carry on. So uh, yeah, pr pretty funny. Yeah. So that what does Tessen mean? Oh, <laughs> oh that, <laughs> was, that was Whoops. happening. That was happening. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> that's a long story. <laughs> we have we have time. Go. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Give us the LDR. Uh, I watched the series, then I was younger, and that was just like my hero. And then I thought, okay, I want to bring that name as well. And then I remember I was seven years old and picked it in World of Warcraft or something. And yeah, now today it's on my t-shirt. So Perfect, perfect. All right, guys, we have some uh, predictions here. So Twitch thinks uh, Janet is going to take it, 58 to 42. Uh, we obviously asked Twitter as well. Raven, what do you think about that one? Yeah, so uh, Twitter's uh, going with them as well. And I, I don't know, like, personally for me, I'm just going with track style. He's playing Hunter, right? So uh, I'm definitely behind him. I, th I think he should take this matchup. But yeah, I, I'm just going with the Hunter play. Ghost of Gamers disagrees, though, quite quite massively with an 80-20% split. Dustin, do you agree? Nah, I must say Disney Madrid. I, b I believe in him. And like he was the only one who, <laughs> who won against me in the split. So... If he wins, it's all right that for me. Yeah, like, that's what you want to say, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Well, he's I got knocked out by the guy who won. Yeah, right? he's for sure like the best <laughs> player here. Like, uh, yeah, he got what it takes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I will root for Jan, and not only because he's from Poland, but I've, uh, I've played versus him competitively in, um, at Seed Story Cup. We actually face each other, and I know he can play both the control and aggressive decks, and he did show a lot of uh, skill playing all, all of the decks. So the only thing that he really needs to control are his nerves, because he was really stressed in the very beginning. But uh, just talking to him right now, I think he's getting better and better. Basically, most of the players, Traki style included, they, they really grow and become someone else uh, throughout all those matches. Because in the first matches you play on uh, that are featured, you're nervous, you're there for the first time. It's just outside of your comfort, comfort zone. But if you keep winning, you get better and better just sitting there and facing your opponents. So if you're like, hey, this is my comfort zone, actually. This is better than sitting at home because I'm here in the spotlight fighting for those prizes. Yeah, for sure. Like they, they are both long in this tournament. Like th they are getting close to the final, and they both got what it takes to come to the final. So let's see who it will be. And um, I believe the nerves are, of course, it's high, but it for sure it was for sure worse than the first game. Absolutely. I spoke with both of the players about it, and I think they feel fine. And now they just want to prove they are worthy for the final. Yeah, like even in the interview, I, I didn't feel like they are super stressed. They're just answering the questions and calm voices. They're like, yeah, I'm ready for it. I, I just want to play Hearthstone already. Yeah, exactly. I think a lot of the players, uh, especially ones that maybe aren't as used to this sort of uh, scenario, is that they just want to be like, right, you know, this is my game. I want to just get, get on with it, win it, and then go into the finals. But, uh, you know, the three-day event helps as well. You know, they've had three days to sort of process uh, what it's like to be in front of the camera and on stream. And, uh, and yeah, I think both these guys have done really well, obviously. And yeah, I'm going to see the first game, which is... Uh, Track Styles Shaman versus what was the deck on the uh, It's Patron. Patron oh, Patron, okay. Yeah, so it seems like Janna actually got the matchup he wanted, right? Like, looking at matchups, uh, Thurston, what do you think? Yeah, for sure. I spoke with this uh, dude about the game before, and he thought, like, okay, I can do two things. I can consider how I'm going to do this, or I can just freeze zero him with Patron. Because Patron got what it takes against that lineup. 
and for sure against the face uh, Shaman deck. So let's see. I yeah. believe he's for sure in favor here. Yeah, that's a good strategy overall. And uh, he got the fireworks uh, in the beginning. That's really important. Um, Raven, what do you think are the chances of uh, Tracky style in this matchup? Yeah, I mean, it's always difficult to try and count out Shaman, especially this early. He doesn't have, like, the craziest opening hand in the world, but even the early destruction isn't too terrible. It's something you don't see too commonly in every uh, aggro Shaman deck, but it's going to be good if those patrons do come out to just instantly answer the board and just forget about them. Um, the only thing here is for Johnny Druid is that he can now go into Armorsmith and uh, Dread Corsair if he wants to, which is a pretty, uh, a pretty good turn if he wants to slow the game down even more. So do you attack into Lepernome uh, after, or do you kill the one free? I think you can attack into the Lepernome because even if um, the one three gets buffed, then it's still going to die to the Corsair if it trades. So I think that's okay. And also the one three doesn't do too much against the Armor Smith, even if the Corsair is removed from like a, a Lightning Bolt or something. So yeah, I think you can just take the Lepernome off the board. Looks like he's going to go for that quite a pain though. That's interesting. Yeah, he's actually going for the slow play here, but he has a fine turn four. Like he can use almost all his cards. So. Uh Let's see what it brings. So, Tessin, what do you think about um, the Shaman's hand at the moment? Mm, yeah, the element of destruction is looking pretty sad, but let's see. He's going for the Lightning Bolt. He really wants to finish this game too fast. Uh, I'm not sure if that's vi viable for him. Uh, I believe this game is for sure looking good for the Disney dude. Yeah, I think the scary thing, though, when you're, whenever you're playing against uh, this uh, this deck is so aggressive, is that their top decks are actually very dangerous. Like, you know, this, you know, it may be a bit later, but when they start just top decking into like lava burst uh, and your know, crackles, Doing it's like, hard. oh yeah, exactly. And it's just like every top deck's potential just burst damage because it's what the whole deck's built around. So there's definitely, um, you know, I think he's in an okay position. Obviously, his card draw's not there, and uh, only having rock biter isn't fantastic. But his board's definitely there, and there's no real good way to clear this board for the warrior at the moment. Uh, what you can do is actually uh, Whirlwind first to deal with the Lepernome because you don't want to um, get your Pirate to free 2 Then play the Pirate, play Armor Smith, and attack with the weapon to the 2 free. What this gives you, it gives you protection. Well, you basically clear the board more or less because the Wolf and the 1 free, if it attacks into your 3-3, your free free, um, it will be enough to kill it, but you're getting armor back from Armor Smith. So I think that would be pretty powerful. And you want to deal with Lepernome, even though it feels like throwing away Whirlwind, but if you keep um, Lepernome on board, you are going to take more damage overall, I think. Yeah, I think the only thing is with using the Whirlwind, um, in that order at least, is that you, you have Armor Smiths in hand. So Whirlwind always feels good when you can do like Whirlwind with double Armor Smith. That's going to stack up for a lot of damage. So I think he's got like halfway in between the potential plays there. And drop one Armor Smith behind the Taunt, gain the extra armor that might gain by you know charging the Taunt first. Uh, and then, you know, going from there. Yeah, for sure. Like, you have the double armor smith. He can do it. I'm not sure about if he he just changed one health from his armor smith to his uh, hero by using armor smith and then whirlwind. I believe the reason he's doing it is because he has the battle rage on the hand and he's lagging on card draw right now. Absolutely. So. That's a good point. Uh, yeah, but I was also thinking, I guess, it's mostly because he wants to have this one life. But overall, it, it worked really well for him. Uh, what do you guys think about Shapeshift? This is one of the first games that we haven't seen steady shot for Tracky style. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Shapeshift's probably like the number two uh, hero power for Aggro Shaman. Mainly because with Doomhammer, it's actually ridiculous. Uh, you equip Doomhammer, then suddenly hit him for three every turn. Uh, because the hero power is actually often worth... You know, like the two mana usage is often worth it as opposed to, you know, like just doing it hit him for one. For sure, the hero power is pretty good. Hmm. So, yeah, just clearing the board. Ting it as slow as possible with the double armor smooth on. Yeah, the I thing is here, the Feral Spirit doesn't actually kill any of the armor smiths either, so, you know, you're looking like you'd be feeling fairly good about, you know, gaining all the additional armor from having double armor smith down. Absolutely, but you do have to attack into armor smiths, because if you just go for face, those armor smiths will quickly replenish the health, but still, this is a lot of life for Janet Druid, so, for now it seems like he needs something right now, but uh, the opening, the couple of those first turns were really good for him, because he's still at 26, that's super healthy, he has armor smith, has minions on board, Oh, and the frothing. Uh, he can draw cards. But should he use the frothing first, or is he going for the death bite? Uh, I think battle rage first, uh, just yeah. to see what you can draw. Mm, execute. You can actually execute at two free. <laughs> this might sound <laughs> weird, but <laughs> and it does sound weird, Nim. I'm gonna. <laughs> <laughs> but this deck, like honestly, um, are there bigger targets? 
No, I, I actually thought it would be the best play to go for the Execute here, because what is it? Like, that won't come at Dr. Boom or anything. I don't believe Shaggy is playing it, but we don't know. Like, he's playing Kisan, Flare, in the Honda, so that can come everything from him. Yeah, I think, I think the idea of not executing here was driven by the Frothing Berserker, and the two minions on board, like, almost having to both trade into it. So if you trade them both in, then one, you're gaining armor, and two, like, you, it leaves a 2-1 on board, you know, like, without spells, right? So, you know, we're sort of discounting the fact that there's spells in hand, but it seems like a really good trade and one that the warrior can deal with in the following terms. Um, and, you know, if he's using spells to clear frothing, then he's not doing them to your face, right? Uh, did he, like, uh, mess up the sequencing? Yeah, he did it in the wrong order. Um, he should kill the armor smith first. Like, attacking the frothing one time was fine. But then... No, I think, didn't he want to guard the Feral Spirit? Because then the Feral Spirit would die. Yeah, but like, he attacked Frothing one time, and then he used the fl uh, he shooted the Frothing down. Oh, right, he did the Lava Shock. For, right, yeah. okay, sorry, sorry, yeah. I thought you meant the attack sequencing, not the spell. Okay, I'll take it all back, I'm wrong. And by the way, Dr. Boom is a possibility right now after Chucky played it, and I think Janet Druid is actually the one who is playing Dr. Boom in his list. I don't recall Chucky style playing one, though. Yep. The early destruction is kind of okay here because the second you start lava bursting stuff like Dr. Boom, oh. when when you're not that far ahead anyways, is a little bit rough. And that early destruction, what did it hit for? Three? Yeah, and Dr. Boom survived. Like yeah, that's it, rough. So, um, yeah. And now Johnny can just start bashing face, be like, okay, I have a Grommage. Oh. Yeah. I would. Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's like. <laughs> you have to do something yeah. with it or you're dead. And, and also there's no need to actually double in a rage. Actually, like if there's no top deck, it's over. <laughs> it's just yeah, it. Wow. <laughs> it's just it on the back of the Grom. <laughs> oh man, Janet Rui takes the first game pretty fast. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. That's exactly how he wanted, in, maybe not exactly how he wanted the matchup to go, because that sounds really weird, because he just went Grom on an empty board and won. Um, but that was really good for him, getting that win, because we've seen how uh, scary the shame deck can be and how much it can just run away with games. Yeah, for sure. It was really important. And yeah, li like we talked about before, Preton got a chance to 3 0 him, and it's really good against the Hunter deck as well, since there's no secrets or anything. So um, yeah, I believe it was a really important win. That's also the first game that uh, X Tracky style dropped in this top 16. Yeah, that's kind of crazy, isn't it? Going double true. 3 is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it was, uh, but he did um, his best as well. Like he played uh, really well overall. But um, this, this is a bad matchup, I believe, for for the Shaman and Jenna Druid got what he wanted. That fireworks at the beginning. A, a nice spell. And the, the Dread Corsair, said double armor smith and yeah. a whirlwind. You know, like they're all the tools you want early on just to survive. It's like a dream. Yeah. Whereas Ellie Destruction from Turn 1 is probably a nightmare for uh, for the Shaman player there. So, you know, really, really big game there for uh, Johnny Druid. And what do you think Traxile's going to lock in next, the Paladin or the Hunter? Yeah, it's a really tough one, because do you want to bring the Honda? You know that Disney Druid isn't playing any classes, who's using secrets? So he need to figure out, how am I going to do this? I know Kisan will be useless, I know that Flare will be useless. So um, he should for sure consider that, then he's picking. On the other hand, he does have, uh, it's kind of like mid-range in a way, because he has Houndmaster, he has um, Savannah High Min as well. So he has a lot of those mid-range creatures that can overpower a patron. And if you think about Paladin, like Paladin I think has a disadvantage overall, but uh, you can win if you get the, the perfect curve. So um, it's a tough one. I, I think patron actually has a better matchup versus Paladin than it has versus Hunter. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I, I would... Prob from what from what I saw of the hunter list, like I'd probably lean towards the hunter because it has things like Hellmaster and it was running a bear trap, if I remember. So like bear trap can be really good as well because a lot of the time there's no easy way to prop the trap and kill the bear at the same time without maybe like a minion and a weapon available or something like that. So and then yeah. that and the second like that's uh, propped incorrectly and then you follow it with a Hellmaster. You know, suddenly the board starts to get very scary. Yeah, and we need to consider what is best against the druid. That's the last deck. Yeah. So um, also, so do we even know the paladin list? No, we are not sure. Yeah, well, if he's not used it yet to 3-0, to then no idea. But I imagine it's secrets. All the cards so far aim, you know, like, lead us towards secret paladin, uh, even though we've not seen secrets yet. But, you know, cer certain cards are not, not really notable in mid-range paladin. I'd be amazed if we saw a mid-range paladin. So, Tessin, what are you looking for um, if you're a patron here? Yeah, the armor smith for sure is a really good thing. He got a frothing. I believe his hand overall is pretty good. The on only card he would like to change out is probably inner rage. Okay, now he got the patron. <laughs> so what were you saying? <laughs> if, if if he draw uh, death by now, it it's uh, he got everything he wants. Like 
it's, it's for sure the best. He got a turn 2, turn 3. If he can equip Death Pipe, make Predators turn 5, I believe it's probably over. But uh, let's see. Well, that can come a lot of stuff. Probably uh, Trey can be playing Repentance, and that is counter card for the Patron for sure. Yeah, like a random Repentance can definitely uh, snipe your Patron, and sometimes you just have to go for a Patron anyway, because you hope, like, if I play this Patron, I just win right now <laughs> at this very moment. Um, Raven, how can Paladin still turn around uh, looking at that Patron hand? Yeah, it's definitely going to be tough. I mean, he can deal with the frothing next turn um, if he decides to coin it out. I don't, I don't know if he will or not. It's probably not worth, but he has the cock hammer, so he can actually just clear off this armor smith if he wants. Um, he really just has to build up the board and hope that the uh, death spike doesn't get drawn. Oh, so man. Nice. It's oh really man. rough. And this is... Tracky style. Yeah, yeah. this is actually just tracky style, yeah. Oh, I like this. Placing of my and we didn't saw any secrets. It can probably just be an aggro. Uh, yeah, it could be. List. It could be aggro list. Yeah, hundred percent. So uh, can you guys tell me exactly what's in the aggro list, or uh, more, more our viewers because I know the cards. Yes. Who's gonna take it? Raven. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Raven, sure. you, you, you were um, playing this deck so, a lot. So, so the list I used recently was actually Game King's list, um, and it just runs. In, in it looks very similar, and this is why you know we were confused up until this Blessing of Might, where the deck actually looks very similar to Secret Paladin, and that's one of its strengths, because there's no reason this isn't Secret Paladin if you're the warrior here. Like, there's, nothing's different. Um, but instead of obviously all the secrets and Challenger, it runs things like Abusive, um, obviously the buffs, the Blessing of Might, it definitely runs two kings, uh, and potentially even South Sea Deckhands as well. Yeah, right. Because it. you run the weapons. So, you know, it just runs a lot more burst, but because yeah. it looks so similar to Secret Paladin, you can play to like turn five or six before yeah. your opponent even realizes. It's a tough one, yeah. I believe there's a lot of cards like that, like Double Ulderman and. Divine yeah, Favor. Exactly. Yeah, double Divine Favor, probably. I believe. Absolutely. And Leroy, possibly as well. Uh, Leperno. Oh, Leperno. It's a really offensive version. Yep. Oh, well, Leperno will give out a lot of uh, information here uh, if it's being played with Master for Battle. Um, so, Master for Battle is probably being played. Yep, to snipe it with the juggles. And then you can squeeze in the Leperno as well. All in on this Leperno juggle. Oh, whoops. I mean, yeah, he sure he didn't kill it because he could hover over it with the knife juggler. Oh, and he oh. still missed. Um, yeah, you don't have to go in though, right? No. Because the, the Frothing Berserker isn't high enough damage to be like, well, if he weapons down the juggler, I'm going to take a million to face. Um, and you have so many tokens that it's, it's unlikely that he's going to get cleared off because he can't Whirlwind, right? Because if he Whirlwinds, the Frothing Berserker dies. So I think it's okay to leave it open and just push for more damage. I like that. Yeah, and I believe Trey really doesn't care about his health in this matchup. He yeah. knows that I'm going to kill him soon. Or if you get ball control, I lose no matter what. It doesn't matter if I have 10 health or full. Yeah, and, and the way you, you beat um, a lot of patron decks is like a, like a high aggro deck, is you just go so fast that they can't stack up the answers quick enough. You know, you don't let them have an easy turn five patron because you press so hard and then continue to do so even after the patron turn. What, what do you think about the whirlwind this turn? Like, uh, I do understand that you need whirlwind for the patrons, but on the other hand, uh, you are facing an aggro paladin. You know about it right now. And with, with whirlwind, you would draw two cards overall as you basically cycle whirlwind and you do not take extra five damage. Yeah, I'm... Okay, so I'm kind of su surprised. I, so the Whirlwind was held off for because he has coin, right? So you can do a Patron turn yeah. next turn without the Death Spike because he can uh, coin uh, in, in a Rage Whirlwind. Um, but I was kind of surprised we didn't see the Blessed and Might there. Yeah. Because I there's no... He has the mana and you're not going to do like... There's no way the Warrior can sort of play around Burst to finish the game. You just do the damage, right? Yeah. You had the mana, you could have put it on uh, the 3-3. Three, three. Um, and and just just attacked and buffed it there, or even you know, I understand not putting on one once because whirlwind just blows it out. But it's definitely interesting the way. Well, he wanted to mind. kill Acolyte of Pain as well, right? So that that's why he attacked with the free free. Yeah, I just don't know if you can afford to ignore it at this point. The warrior is pretty low. You could have gained an additional what five damage, put him to thirteen. Yeah, yeah, it's a tough one for sure. I believe he wants to combo it with Lothab to uh, make so that can't be an execute or anything. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah, it might actually be a, a, a bit more damage uh, through that, for sure. But now there is a... It was just there was definitely a, a chance that, like, you know, weapon, execute, coin, whirlwind yeah. could yeah. come out. And then you've got nothing to play Blast and Bite on. So I would rather just cash in the damage while you can. Because at the moment with his hand, like, Lothab is fantastic to lock out some awkward turns uh, for the warrior. But you know, he gets the whirlwind. Is he going to leave? Oh, okay. So he's going to leave it up. So now he does get the Blast and Bite value. Um, but there was definitely a chance he could miss that out. Yeah, so it seems like uh, Janna was, again, a bit late with his whirlwind. He decided not to do it, just to do it next turn, and he did take that damage. 
Yeah, and this is going to be rough. Although, even um, with the Blessed Might pushing, which I still don't mind because you just want to get the damage done, um, the weapon actually does clear up Lothar. But if he does five now, um, he puts him to what? So that puts him to seven. And then he takes another five from the Lothar. He's put him to four. He'll armor it back up to six. And there is the weapon poking him for one every turn. So, so we're just going to see patrons. Uh, and this, this, yeah. deck, this deck will run Leroy, by the way. That they piled in, more, more than likely. Yeah, I so believe the, so. There's the, the burst is, is potential, just a top deck. Yeah. Well, he will play the Corsair this turn if he goes for, for the Patrons. And uh, is there any reason not to go for Patrons? Just go down to four, but uh, there's only a one attack weapon. Uh, Lira is a possibility, but then like you play Corsair this turn. Uh, but you first, like you f I guess, you play P Patron into Corsair, attack Lotheb, and then pass. And then just follow up with the Belcher next turn and try to get more patrons. Yeah. Pray for Armsmith. Yeah, I think it's the only way you're going to win. If you went like uh, Corsair attack Belcher, it just feels too slow. You've got so much health to grind through for the Paladin. And um, if the Paladin is going to pull out like one card to get through a taunt, like is the other one going to stop too much in one turn? Yeah. From, uh, you know, straight from hand. I mean, this deck can do it with like double blessed and might Leroy, but I think, I think the one taunt's enough, right? Argent, uh, Argent Horse Rider is a is a card being played. Mm -hmm. So like, how many how many charge cards are there? Arcane uh, Golem. Deckhand so? potentially. Saucy Deckhand. Arcane yeah. Golem can go in, but people can cut it for like just just have Leroy as like the big yeah. charge minion. Raffle your hand a bit. Not this turn, apparently. Oh, that can create a couple of patrons. Yeah, I think he just wants to create a board big enough. I mean, look, the warrior's on four, right? So he just wants to create a board big enough that, like, he can hopefully use that Blessing of Might. Because already, like, the Blessing of Might's been his hand so long, and he could have used it multiple times by now. Oh, man. Armor, sure. armor Smith would be huge. Would you not draw first, or is he just going for Sludge Belcher into Armor Up? Is there mm. is there no room to, for drawing cards here? Yeah, I would like to draw cards as yeah. well. Probably trading first now to have one more card draw, but after that, okay. I believe he really needs to use it. Yeah, because you're always going to trade, right? So why you, to why sequence not try it? You, you would always. I mean, you you could lose one armor, but you gain one card, which I think the card is ha much higher value than one single armor. But does that no, does not play around divine favor? No, oh. that's true. That's probably one of the reasons why he went for most of a bell yeah. to get a better divine favor. And and also, uh, owl. Is in this deck, believe it or not, in, as it is in most aggro decks. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like even an owl can make a pretty big impact now if the owl comes down onto the ghoul and then obviously just run a 1 1 into the 3 1, you don't really care. Well, I think uh, Gianni will have to oh. slowly start. Uh, oh! Okay. Slowly start racing because this doesn't look great, especially after that Divine Favor. There will be still 5 more mana to go through all those uh, things. I probably would trade here. Uh, it's kind of tough, actually. I suppose you presume the girl's going to clear the Leroy. And that's, that's lethal. basically lethal. it. Yeah. That's lethal. That's game. Oh, wow. <laughs> it doesn't even need to do my favor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Leroy but Jenkins. Yeah, you can look at Trek. He's really happy about it. Yeah, there's even more damage than needed. So, Chucky Style is able in, to defeat in, a patron. Interesting that he chose to play the Blessed of Might when he didn't need to. Because he's going <laughs> to play this deck again. Yeah, that's serious. True. Like, you didn't see a Blessed Might all game. Well, so. you can actually expect it. This is an aggro. Like, there's Leroy tells you everything. There's a difference yeah. between expecting a card and actually having it confirmed to you, right? Yeah, and on the list, like, because Janet Dredd is doing the notes as well, yeah. I believe. That's true, that's true. But uh, I think, would you not expect it, Tessin? Like, Blessing of Might when you see Leroy? I would expect it for sure. No doubt of that. But, like you said, there's no reason to show it if, if you can do the win. Like, BMing or anything. This isn't ladder. Like, the, the opponent is writing everything down, so there's no reason to show anything you got on the And the, the thing is, as well, like what it will do, um, and I'm not going to say you know it's going to change the game and he'll lose because he showed him Blessed and Might, but it means that Blessed and Might is fresh in his mind, whereas he's just played a whole game that was relatively long for an aggro match because it was versus the patron and not seen a single Blessed and Might. So he might just like not play around that at some point, but then What's showing it is just like, oh, okay, he has Blessed and Might. It's fresh right. in my mind. He's probably wrote it down, so now it's in front of him, and he'll start to think about that. I'll just agree with you guys there. <laughs> I will not try to convince you that there is some psychological <laughs> advantage with like attacking for nine where your portrait <laughs> explodes. Uh, but uh, the truth is that the Paladin won, and now Chucky Style uh, still will continue with the Paladin, and Janadroid needs to defeat this uh, aggressive Paladin. He still has a Shaman, and a druid. The druid was the standard druid. It was not an aggro one. And shaman is obviously the the face shaman. How does those decks match up versus that paladin? Doesn't. Yeah, this is a real tough one. Like this new druid just lost a game that was so good for him. Like he was th there was draws and a lot of stuff. We saw the game, but yeah. 
I believe he will switch into Shaman right now. Um, I don't think the Druid stand a chance against a deck that's so fast, but... Uh, yeah, the Paladin can actually perform pretty well versus Druid because you run the uh, the double Keeper of Aldermen and Owls, so uh, potentially two Owls, but more than likely one. So like, you just ignore the taunts. That's how you yeah. play. You either reduce the taunt and kill it quickly, or just ignore it. And because there's cards like Blessing of King, Blessing of Might, you can actually trade up into a Druid of the Claw very easily and just remove it off the board and then carry on. And the second the Druid doesn't draw like a swipe or rat early, then like you, you know you just steamroll them. How yeah. shaman work? Like as a shaman, you will be racing paladin, and the, you will be going for phase early. Uh, what's the difference between the the secret uh, secret paladin? I believe one of the different is that we uh, I spoke with Justin Drill about it, and he's playing a more accurate version, like totemic mid, and he's he's playing a lot of defensive stuff, like uh, flame tongue totem. He fights for the ball control. He's just not trying to one shot the opponent or something like that. That is ball control in this deck, and I believe he's gonna use that, and um, there's a big chance he will go shaman now. All right. Uh, I would like, on my from my perspective, I definitely would queue Shaman instead because w of what Raven said. That this Paladin can be really deadly versus Druid. Uh, does it run through Silver Champion? I believe so. Probably double. It's eight damage. The Paladin. Uh, it might run one. Yeah. I think the thing is as well with the Shaman is that he plays. I'm going to get confused now because they both played Shaman. Uh, he did play he's the Chucky not, version. He's not playing Ellie Destruction though, right? He's not. Not that. Okay. Because Ellie Destruction would actually be okay in this matchup because if you fall behind on board, you can wipe it. And then just you know like reset the game to a certain extent. But if he's not playing it, then that's something he doesn't have. But yeah, the shaman's definitely the better pick for sure. And shaman got Earthshock as well. We need to remember that against Blazing of Kings and uh, yeah. of course the Blazing of Might. But yeah, like even cards like Lightning Bolt can uh, deal with a minion that's being buffed by. Hey, Keeper of Alderman can just Earthshock your own minion depending on what he uh, what he removes. Yeah, Lepernum, Lepernum opening. So Lepernum is back. <laughs> back in <laughs> this town. is your favorite game. Absolutely, I love the aggro decks. And he's. Keeping oh. a oh, rock by the weapon. He's going for the ball control. Oh man. There's a possibility of Trog into coin feral spirits. Yep. That's yeah. a pretty he good opening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good opening. <laughs> Everyone sat there going, yep, this is this is known as pretty good. Obviously going for face Lepernome. Lepernome doesn't even know. Yeah, I'm loving as well. He, How he got fast these guys are playing. <laughs> yeah. They're like, I know what the battle plan is here. Let's just lock it in quick. Well, I, I know this matchup really yeah. well. I'll do it. And uh, now I'm not sure about trading. I we probably should raise, actually. Um, like, go. He's going for the Leper Gnome, but uh, I'm not sure about it. Like, free damage to face is a lot. Mm. Yeah, I would normally go for the face anytime, but since he's playing double flame tongue, and I know that I spoke with him before this game, and he's playing an accurate version and not rushed, I believe that's the reason. Okay. Yeah, and like you said, I if the idea is you want to play for board, then you play for board every turn, right? It's like when you try and go half and half, um, it, you can actually get punished by that. Yeah, but now uh, there is a great board um, with um, there is a weapon and a lot of dudes. So how do you deal with that? Like you can't really start trading now, and you have only one mana anyway this turn. So he he will be forced to go for phase anyway, I, I believe. Just slam what Lepernome and go five to phase. Hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I don't think there's not much uh, much other options with obviously such limited mana. There's a chance he will go abuse, so just to be sure, he has the damage to the face. He can always use. Uh, okay. So he's still going for the board. Well, if he goes rock biter, then he will trade into the two two, uh, kill one of the one ones, and then protect his free one through that. Well, there's still the weapon, right? Yeah, exactly. I think. So he just wants to force more damage by forcing the weapon usage out. Um, there's even a chance that he might just bless. Oh, okay, abusive now. But he could have even like blessed the might seemed okay, uh, just to kill kill through the taunt uh, and keep your tokens alive because that's what they both want to do here. And um, I think the paladin actually might run a consecrate as well. Yeah, so, it's that, so that might help. It's too damage. It's exactly. It's, it's burst. It hits face. <laughs> of course, you run it. Definitely. And is there a steady shot? Nope. But shape oh, shift. this is getting hard. Yeah, do you go for shape shift, or could you consider going for the arm up? Shape shift, man. You've got two charges on that weapon left. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, that's uh, that's huge uh, because yeah. you'll be able to kill um, many minions. minions with yeah. two health. So, uh, Janetrid lost the board control that he was aiming for. What now? Uh, see, now now is the issue of. Um, this is when like wh when people do run early destruction. It's really nice because you just reset the board completely. Um, but, you know, this could still go both ways, because the thing the, the Shaman has that the Paladin doesn't 
is uh, just insane burst, like yeah. straight from hand. Whereas the pile, yeah, whereas the Pylon just doesn't really have that. They just rely on the minions, which is why they're, they're both pretty aggressively playing for board here. Um, so like, it's still doable for the Shaman. I think, uh, I think he might not run Ancestral Knowledge in this deck. Because um, I know, uh, was Chucky's version running it? I think maybe he either cut one or cut them both. So uh, the card draw could be a bit of a problem. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned Burst, but on the other hand, oh man, this is what he needed in a way because it's actually not doing that much. Uh, is he still is he still going for Crackle though? Like I was I was thinking like mm -hmm. what what does he really need to win this game? Uh, there is Leroy, so and he's already at 17. Doomhammer looked nice for a moment. Yeah, this is this is interesting. So he's reducing the damage down a lot, but the issue is like he's just delaying Doomhammer by one turn feels really bad. Yeah, but then Doomhammer was what was Doomhammer doing? Face, face, for, and then for you, and face. then you top deck your second rock biter into some more because you could like rock bite a lava burst, lava shot, uh, crackle, um, with the lava shock. Sorry, so uh, you know he, there's potential to draw a lot of burn. Whereas now, um, I think he almost just has to equip Doomhammer, or there's just no chance. Uh, unless he gets uh, a, a minion, that's a bit better, like Totem Golem. Uh, it's just, I think you've just got to Doomhammer here. Well, you can lava shock the free two and play Totem Golem. Yeah, and th yeah, and then you also can use to, uh, hero power after that mm. since you will unlock one crystal. Exactly, exactly. I think that's actually better. Um, if you go for the Doomhammer, you'll be able to unlock all the crystals after the Doomhammer. But the Doomhammer you just take four damage. I so like it as well. Throw. And there's no way he can get the ball control. But like he can outrush him because he will take at least five damage every turn. Doom so Doomhammer is probably the more play to win. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> The problem is the Paladin's going to spawn tokens every single turn, so you're going to lose it, you know, if you try and do board. Um, and also the Paladin's hero powering to gain one armor every turn, and potentially doing one damage, every, uh, one additional damage every turn. So I don't know, you know, it's, it's a really tough decision. I mean, I don't profess to be an amazing Shaman player whatsoever, but I just feel like the only out here is to go into, like, Rock Bite a Lava Burst or something. Like, yeah, I just feel like banking the Doomhammer now so you can do four damage every turn going forward. Yeah, yeah. It is going to be more worthwhile. Because he's on 22. How are you ever going to kill him? Yeah, I think, like, attacking the Juggler was correct, but then attacking into face was the, the, was the second one off. would be better. One off, Lethal. <laughs> that's, one off. That's really close, though. And Doomhammer suddenly doesn't do that much. Yep. The power of Leroy is still, still around. Well, he will have it next turn. Uh, I don't see a way to heal here unless uh, Taunt taught him. Oh. Oh, do you get uh, Priest hero power and a heal? Oh, I would love to see that. The Priest or so, the Rora one. So you definitely you Lava Shock as well, don't you? Cause do, do you not want a Totem first? No, you Why? not necessarily. Why, uh, you Totem for Taunt and then you Finley. You Lava Shock to unlock the Crystals. Then so you can hero power again. Oh, he got Desert Heal. I think oh. you Totem Golem and then you Lava Shock and then you heal yourself for two. Uh, you build up board and then you actually yeah. escape lethal here. So this might oh. be the start. Like now, the comeback's needs, real. Yeah, he needs a top deck, and he cannot really slam Leroy onto this board. Can he get it? Can he get one card that deals damage there? He just needs what? Blessing of Kings. Two more damage. Oh, it's not, not enough mana. Blessing might. Palatrella. Yeah, sure is good. And he's slowly chipping the health down. So three, four. Can Janna actually three. come back on the back There's of Leather still 12, here? so he can't top deck anything to do 12. And he, so he just needs to kill the Shredder, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second Golem's okay. You just trade the, the, the Totem Golem in now. Play the second one here. Uh, it can Hope be to God for a one health minion. Uh, that's He's that one off. Eight, one nine. Off still. Oh, man. Okay. And he, goes and he can't he can't kill that minion. <laughs> yeah. Because that's <laughs> just obviously like... Ooh. Uh, you go face, right? Yeah, you, yeah, you, you, you have to you have to set up for the kill yeah, yeah. if possible. Like if you get Rogue Rider, how how much damage can you deal? So this turn you deal five more, right? So you put them it's on fourteen. So with um, oh no, lava burst isn't you know he needs crackle, right? He needs Rogue Rider. He's actually considering not attacking because he believes the game can last longer and he can heal himself up. Yeah. Mm. So he wants to have the weapon for the board. Oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> a. Dead card. <laughs> Feels bad, man. Divine favor on no card. If I ever ever said, uh, if I have ever seen a dead card, that's a dead card. Mm. That's a dead card. The scary sure. thing is, this two four is gonna sneak in some damage, along with the hero power, and he, you know, there's no punishment, and there's no reason to play Leroy, I don't think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then uh, now he can kill it actually with the minion attacks and uh, heal himself up again. Yeah. And maybe develop even more board. It really depends. Like this is the top deck war in a sense. 
Uh, oh, that's this could be nice. That's fine, yeah. yeah. It doesn't even matter if it hits or not. Yeah, this is okay. <laughs> Alright, now, now do, do you... So, say, say he survives one more turn, do you actually hold off on the Doomhammer in case you get the Rock Biter? I guess you do, but still, l let's see the card first. Is it now a dead card, or can he actually survive? That's still uh, one. enough. I think, right? Oh, you can Eight hero power. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah hero sorry. Power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you always forget about that pesky oh, hero power. Oh, man. Again on the Maybe back yeah. of the Leroy. Yep. Leroy Jenkins, tracky style. <laughs> Ladies that and druid gentlemen. hero power. And now Janna is uh, with his druid deck. And uh, Raven, how bad is that matchup? Like, it's winnable. It's not, like, terrible. But the problem is, if the Paladin draws the... Uh, the, if the Paladin draws relatively well early curve and the, it's, the deck's so consistent because it is an aggro deck, it's got a lot of low curve. If yeah. it draws the Keepers of Alderman or the Owl at a good time, y if you just Owl one Druid of the Claw that they've got out, sometimes you're just too fast then afterwards <laughs> and you can just stack up the damage so much. And you have Burst, like Leroy in hand. So um, I think it's favoured. I don't think it's unwinnable for the Druid at all. But the Druid needs to, uh, as Gara would say, cheat <laughs> um, and, and, just, and just really ramp into something ridiculous and the Paladin not have a quick answer to it. All right. Uh, Dustin, do you s how do you see chances of Genedrid at the moment? Yeah, it's of course not looking that great since he's behind and he will have a really bad matchup the next one for sure. But if he can figure something out with a good wild growth into a, a polished red or something like that, there's hope. So uh, I believe he just needs to have some good draws and consider his play and there's a chance he can take the victory. And yeah. if that if that happens, he will actually face the, the Hunter deck? And uh, how would be Druid versus Hunter? Like, Honda is for sure good against Druid, but right now Druid is, I would say, just a better class. And if you look at the Honda list, there are some Kassan Flare cards that's totally useless against the Druid. So I believe it would at least be an even matchup. Um. Okay, so Janet Druid still has a chance to come back, but it will be tough. He needs to stop this Leroy Paladin that... Um, if it wins, it's a, a really good charging Leroy because it will be worth $1,500. Yeah, pretty good. And hasn't he won both games with Leroy now? Yes. No, Golden Leroy got yeah. what it takes. Golden Leroy is always in your hand when you need it. Absolutely. I mean, that's a, a great charge minion. Um, and uh, it's so cool that it's actually playable in Hearthstone from the very beginning. Uh, because, uh, again, in World of Warcraft card game, it was good in the beginning, but then it just faded away. And I feel like, even after rotation, we will still play Leroy. Where did the Leroy character come from, Nimsh? Story, story time with Nimsh. Oh, story time with Nimsh? Yeah. Unless Tessin knows. Do you know? Oh, I saw the video on YouTube, like someone yeah, in <laughs> Play Rock is just screaming, Leroy! And then he just went full hand pulled the whole thing, and everyone was screaming at him. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I yeah, think it's a good story. Pretty that much, yeah, that story. was pretty that's much. <laughs> story time with Tessin now. You've been observed, Nimsh. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> you know, that, that was a good story time. Yeah, that was exactly, exactly right. So, just interesting in case you knew that or not. Absolutely, absolutely. It's good that uh, we can ask Tessin for those yeah. things. Yeah, it's important to know the important things about World of Warcraft, and that's for sure the best thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. I, I think it uh, brings a lot of flavor to the game overall. Like, if you look at the cards, uh, if you know the background, uh, you can get much more... Um, Experience and all you just appreciate it. Yeah, you, you appreciate the design. A yeah, lot yeah more definitely, as well. definitely. Okay, so can Janet Druid actually get back with the Druid? Um, he, he in the interview he said it could have been Janet Warlock or Janet Shaman. Yeah, he doesn't even like Druid. He just like he, did. He just roll a nine-sided dice. It's like yeah, done. Nine-sided dice. I'm sure. I'm sure you can get nine-sided dice. I don't think so. Sure. Well, you can get a 10 and just maybe not use one yeah, side. Yeah, just ignore, ignore the one, the, the one row, that's fine. You, pr you haven't played many RPGs in your life, haven't you? I'm sure somewhere <laughs> exists an inside the dice names. I'll find one. Okay. One, one day. For the next tournament. Let's yeah. go. Okay, deal. Deal. Okay. I'm well going to make one. It's going to be w really weird. <laughs> okay. So, Druid versus um, Paladin. And there is no steady shot. What happened? No steady shot. Hmm. Shapeshift was uh, shapeshift was actually pretty useful before. Yeah, I like shapeshift here for sure. I think yeah, yeah. Shapeshift feels good, but the problem is it's just way more useful versus the shaman than it is versus the druid. Yeah, yeah. So I was gonna say ping might be okay because it sort of does the same job, um, and you can like just ping off the much higher attack minions uh, as opposed to um, you know just, just having face tank them. them. Yeah, because yeah. you don't want to do that, right? The one armor isn't gonna negate the the four or five attack from the minions that much. Also, you can go for taunt with uh, fire blast. Yeah, just ping face till you win. So Tessan, how do you? Um, 
evaluate the, the hand from Druid? Do you think this is the cheat hand or is it just... Nah, it's for sure not the cheat hand. He's missing Innovate, he's missing Wild Growth. Like, his hand was fine if he could coin out the Wild Growth turn 1, so he could go to Shade into Kiba. But now it's taking one turn extra, so I believe he's considering Wrath a 1-3 minion just to stall the game as long as possible to draw something that can change it. Yeah, it, it makes sense. Um, because like we've seen this minion buffed before, and uh, Finley can be really deadly o overall. Just a deadly Murloc. He doesn't look that deadly, does he? <laughs> no, he's a gentleman. He's friendly. He just helps his, his the guy who put him in the deck. He's right? just friendly, uh, going to you and slapping in the face for one damage and just going back. Yeah, but he does it with style. I mean, he's got a monocle on, man. What, what more do you need? And it looks like he has gloves as well, right? Yeah. Oh, he's just got orange hands. He's a Murloc. Yeah, yeah right? he has orange hands. <laughs> Okay, um, so Paladin overall, so Druid doesn't have the, the great hand, but this hand is good enough, at least for now. There is uh, Keeper, Double Keeper and Swipe, so uh, Druid should be able to deal with this kind of board uh, with the aggression and stop it. And it's important that our oh, Keeper will be amazing versus this uh, to silence. But there is also Ancient of Lore to heal back later in the game, and even Thorison if you need a, a big body. What about Paladin, though? Like, there is a lot of burst for Paladin, and a very important Keeper of Uldoman as well. Yeah, the Divine Favor was huge, actually, in just being able to refill the hand, because before that it was looking a bit dicey, um, but this is huge. I mean, you have the Keeper of Uldoman that like you said, you know, you've got all the options. You can go into Shredder this turn, which I really like, uh, or you can just bank the True Silver, actually, which would be reasonable. Um, you sort of open to swipe face, but the True Silver does so much work next turn versus like a Druid of the Claw or something like that. This is a tough choice because if you go for Keeper, you uh, are more resistant to swipe. But on the other hand, Keeper is so good versus Druid of the yeah, Claw. Yeah, I think I think you minutes. keep Keeper. Um, you keep the Keeper. Uh, just to deal with taunts, like that's pretty much all you bothered about. Or you know, if the game comes to it, you can just reduce down a Doctor Boom to you know like reduce the damage that's going to come out from the Druid. Absolutely. Mainly taunts. I like the rough into coin swipe. Tessa, what do you think? Yeah, then I would go for the swipe first to see what's happened. In worst case scenario, it can be a 4-4 minion, and I believe he needs to play for winning and not for not losing, even though this is a really tough matchup for him. So would you like to swipe first or rough first? Swipe first. And why is that? Mm, this will give him more damage in a way. Like, the chains of coming and our minion in, so I believe that's the way to do it. But yeah, that was a flame tongue, so he got more damage this way. Okay, and now just following with Lotheb, uh, but he lost the board and Druid is still at 22, so not that threatened. Yeah, and the good thing now is with the, this is where you see the power of Keeper of Alderman versus Druid. There's a 5-5 five five on the board that can't really be answered. The 1-1 one one Divine Shield and you have buffs in hand like Blessing of Might. Um, and you can just kill whatever he plays this turn easily. Um, so what, he's got 3 mana left, so he can buff the 1-1 um, one one maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah, above the 1-1, one, one, as you said, and now with the free mana, he can either go for uh, Master for Battle because he's seen Swipe. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know if he was actually going to uh, keep her the 5-5. Five five okay. And Blessing of Might, the 1-1, one, one, to kill the 5-5. Five five. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then just kill off the 2-3 with was, the low third. That was so probably better. I think this, the reason he stopped is I think he's just realized he, there <laughs> yeah. might have been a better play there. Be well, he's playing so fast, right? And sometimes it's counterintuitive to actually yeah. change your uh, opposing minion into a free free, and that would be so much better. Yeah, because now he has to do this, and he didn't like. I mean, it's the same thing overall, I guess. So it's not not a major issue because it worked out the same usage of cards, but yeah. maybe just the way I thought of it differently. Just yeah, reducing, it it's naturally reducing down the enemy minion as opposed to you know leaving a Thoris in. It was five. confusing for a moment, right? Yeah. We, we all got stuck there. But look at this pressure on the Druid. He's on 17. Um, he did get the Emperor Tick, which is pretty important. Especially because he's now got some quite cheap cards in the form of like the Keeper of the Grove only being three, the Wrath being one, which is pretty big. Um, and he yeah, does have the Druid of Claw as well, but there's so much more damage and there's True Silver and Arcane Golem still in hand. Yeah, eight damage on hand is yeah. really huge. What about um, actually Savage or this turn Druid of the Claw? Is, was there a play like that? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, all right. No, I don't think you gain enough. Um, I think the Druid of the Claw has to come down in Taunt. And you just have to just hope there's no owl or something like that. But we can see it'll be dealt with. I really consider going for the healing here, because then your turn next turn you can do go druid off the claw and keep it together. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, because if you go druid of the claw, you'll have to shapeshift and attack into the divine shield to play around the second blessing of kings. Yeah. Oh. Uh, well, Ooh. there is a fire blast waiting for you, so I'm not sure yeah. about charge. I think when you're guaranteed to get it pinged off next turn, it feels bad. 
But even now, he does go in. He takes additional two damage heals for one with the hero power, of course. But now, we're probably just going to see the mini bot go in with the weapon. And then I just... Are you that bothered about Arcane Golem yet? I don't know. Yeah, he could also go for Must of a Battle first and then yeah. equip the True Silver. Uh, follow up with Lebanon. And then Janet Red will need the second swipe because how do you deal with all those pesky 1 ones? Yeah. For sure, a second swipe would really be game changing. And right the Lebanon's actually insane pickup. Just because he can play it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's it's like just a, any one drop would have been brilliant then. The Lepanome's even more so because it's guaranteed two damage. So is this a swipe? <laughs> He's already used one, right? So yeah. odds are low. Living, Living roots. roots. Oh, so he can't. And this is the issue with like, what you said about the previous play of now his curve looks really weird. Like, you can't really, you know, like, Druid of the Claw into Keeper of the Grove might have done a little bit better then. Um, and then you get the heal previous turn from the Ancient of Law. Yeah. yeah. You can't really draw, right? Like, if you draw, you, no, you have to. No, you can't really anything. Well, you, you draw into you innovate, need innovate Swipe. innovate Swipe, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, come on. I, it, it's like... Is he f when he, if he thinks this game is over, he probably will go for that. Yeah, you need to play for winning and not for not losing, for sure. Yeah. But, yeah. Alright, he's going for the heals, not, not just, like... <laughs> innovate into Swipe would be so... Do you, do you actually live live in, live in roots for the two one ones here? Because like, it yeah. doesn't kill the three four. If you kill the leopard, oh well, it's doing two anyway, right? And then there's no point living roots in a one one because you can hero power. Whereas yeah. the one ones will actually trade quite well. In yeah, the you next need to turn. respond to this at least. Uh, how much damage is there incoming? There's five plus uh, eight, twelve damage. Yeah. Uh, Sixteen actually, seventeen. Uh, it, it might be crazy, but Tracky style is just missing one damage. Yeah, because he can ping as well, actually. Yeah, I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so the odds on drawing one damage in Aqua Wait, no, he's, high. he's not missing yeah, no, one no, damage. No. He has a lethal because yeah. he can ping Leper Gnome. So he oh, basically okay. has... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, let's see if he's still the player. Yeah, now, now he can ping, like, the new Leper Gnome. Right, and this is where, like, it's ultimate pressure. Do you see the ping Leper Gnome? Because sometimes people aren't used to playing with Finley Tero powers, and you just forget about things you can actually yeah. do. Oh, man, Tracky style has lethal. Can he see it or not? That's the question. Oh my he's God. counting damage. I think he sees it. He just ca he's just counting damage. He's, so he's, like he's repeatedly poked yeah. for that Lepernome. So yes, it's like Lepernome 4, and there is like 3 with, with this. It's 7, and it sometimes, seems like he got Sometimes it. your mind just goes ping face. Right. Let's yeah. see. Let's see. Because some, you know, like it's, it's kind of... Un obviously, it's a misplay because he could win instantly if he doesn't do it. Yeah. Or well, he knows. He it seems like he got it. He's leaving it. ping to last. Yeah, 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 there we go. With wow. the ping of Lepernome, Tracky Styles the first person. No, he's not. Second. He's the second, actually. Yeah, because I wasn't casting the previous one. <laughs> yeah, I messed it, uh, messed it up. But uh, Tracky Styles is advancing to the final, which means that we have a double Romanian final on the Romanian ground. That's crazy. What are the odds, actually, when everything was open qualifiers as well? <laughs> exactly, That's pretty, right? pretty nuts. So, uh, and, and both have different play styles because Tracky Style is really aggressive with his, with his decks. And then uh, Moody is really control based with. Uh, he's running Zoo, but I always like but imagine the, Moody. His being. actual style of play yeah, is yeah, very yeah. like trade into minions constantly. I'll just never get pushed back in a. You know, like I never lose in terms of in a, from an aggressive stance. Always Absolutely. just play safe. Well, so that Leroy, that, that Leper Gnome ping was worth $1,500. Yeah. Good, good work, Leper Gnome. And Finley, of course. All right. So um, we are here with Jackie Style. Uh, first, congratulations. Uh, we, you are the, the finalist. How do you feel? Foarte bine, deoarece am învins un jucător foarte bun. La 1-0 m-am temut că o să pierd versus 4, deoarece avea match-up favorabil versus toate clasele mele. So he's feeling very good and he knows that he defeated a very good player and he was a little bit scared when it was 1-0 that uh, he was going to lose. Uh, so how happy were you when you defeated that patron deck, finally? Yeah. Petra Deck e un deck care poate să învingă toate clasele mele și, cum am spus mai devreme, m-am temut că o să pierd, dar am dat două top de curs foarte bune. So he was a little worried because he knew that Patron Deck is one of the decks that is most likely to um, overpower his own decks, but he worked it out. Okay. Um, guys, do you have any questions about the matchups? Um, just one question. Uh, so what made you pick Agro Paladin? versus like the secret paladin everyone's been running so far. Agro paladin mi se pare un de mai bun de secret paladin. Cu el am jucat foarte mult, am ajuns top 30 legend și am jucat mai multe meciuri și am mai multă experiență cu acest deck. Um, he answered that he is just a, it's a deck that he's more comfortable with. It's a deck that he uh, managed to reach uh, rank 30 legend and uh, overall um, he just likes it more than uh, than secret. Cool. 
And uh, a question about your shaman deck. You're running lightning destruction. Uh, is it really working for you? Da, elementul destruction este pare foarte bun versus Petra versus Zo and versus Secret. Am ales această carte contra lor. De la acești ani că toți vor veni cu aceste decuri aici la turneu. He anticipated that everybody would bring those decks and he knew that it would be a good counter strategy. Okay. And uh, that Lepernome ping that you did with the Fire Blast, it was worth $1,500. Do you understand? Da, nu prima oară nu vă sunt letala, dar am numărat mai bine și am făcut-o. At first glance he didn't notice it, but then he recounted and it, it worked out in his favor. All right, that was uh, pretty impressive, really good aggro power, um, and you won two times on the back of the Leroy Jenkins charge, which was also pretty nice. Um, any, any final words? Like, uh, you are facing Moody in the final, so two Romanian players facing each other on the Romanian grounds. That has to feel great, right? Da, și am trecut a câștigat totul în român și am să la fel. Moody, îl cunosc de mai mult timp pe Moody și mi se pare un jucător foarte bun, dar final e deschisă. Uh, Romanians have won big tournaments in the past, and he also knows that uh, Moody personally, so everything is okay. Okay. Um, so, do you have anything to say to Moody? Like, I will defeat you. Da, sper să învin pe Moody și știu că va fi greu, dar are are și el patron warrior și asta va fi foarte dificil. Um, he's a little bit scared of the patron warrior, but uh, he's very hopeful and uh, hopes that he will put in a good performance against Moody. All right, that's really cool. Um, so, guys, no, no more questions from you? No, I'm good. good. No, I'm good. Okay, okay. so, um, again, uh, congratulations for making the final. Uh, he, th <laughs> he thanks you, and right now he's feeling great and really hopeful that he will win. All right, and Tessin, uh, thank you so much for joining us on the casting couch. It was a pleasure having you. And uh, Raven, we will be here for the final. So get well. ready and you guys get ready as well because we are almost ready with the final match after three long days. Qualifiers, Swiss part, day two single elimination, top 16, top eight, top four. We are here with two great Romanian players. One is representing aggressive style. One is representing the controlish style, the peaceful style. Who is going to be the PGL Tavern Tales champion? You will know after the break. Stay tuned. <laughs>